Hello and welcome to my YouTube live stream. God bless everyone who just joined in. Nice to have you with us. It's showtime. <laughs> hello, hello. Welcome. Today we are going to talk about a very important topic. So please invite your friends and share the YouTube link on your social media accounts. Don't share them if you think you'll be in danger right thank you again for joining in guys today we're going to talk about the very corruption of the quran but before we start i want to pray along with you so please take your time and let us pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ dear Lord thank you for your endless grace by and through the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ of your son we are saved your love for us is infinite Lord thank you for all what you have done for us thank you for your greatness and thank you for our daily bread, Lord. Lord, forgive our daily sins and guide us so we can forgive other people's sins too. Because you told us, if you want to be forgiven, learn to forgive others who might curse you or hurt you. Thank you, Lord, that you are so mighty and you give me peace when I'm weak and in need of your comfort. Please give me the strength and wisdom today and always to overcome lies and deceptions. Help me not to lean on my own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct my words, thoughts and actions. Lord. Satan is using deception and we know he loves and desires to keep us from the truth. Lord, please don't allow him to win. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, deception and doubt. Please Lord, please Lord, help us honor you in all our ways in Jesus name we pray amen guys before we start please let me know if you can hear me is the sound crystal clear give me a one if you can hear my voice crystal clear okay thank you for your confirmation thank you thank you so like I said, today's topic is <clears throat> the deception, sorry, the corruption of the Quran. And on this live broadcast, we will have the opportunity to do a nice teaching again. We will go through some Islamic sources and see how and by who the Quran of Allah was corrupted. And last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat as we have done in the last three live shows. You can ask me questions about Islam or the discussed topic. In other words, you can go and ask me questions and I will try to answer as far as I can. And if there are Muslims in the live chat, don't call me while I'm teaching. You can call me when we start the Q&A session. So if you call me now, I will not answer. And <clears throat> I have seen also in one of the last live shows a question that I also want to address that is outside of today's topic. So, you know, sometimes the live show and the live chat goes very uh, fast so I can't keep up with all the questions but I always try 
to rewatch the live uh, streams. So if I missed a question that is very important, I will pick it out and try to address it in the Q&A session time period in the end. So like I said, thank you for joining in. Please subscribe and smash that like button. Now, Muslims have always claimed that the Quran of Allah was uncorrupted. It was uncorrupted for the last 1400 years. They say, especially the lying and deceivers who are their leaders, their ustads, their shiuch, their imams, they say that not even a letter, not even a dot in the Quran has been changed for the last 1400 years, which is of course a false claim, a lie. And today we are going to prove to you that they are nothing but liars and deceivers. Well, what else is new? All right, guys, what else is new? We have been destroying their lies and deception for a very long time now. And as you see here in front of you, in the background, you see here, this is Speaker's Corner, where our dear friends in Christ, our dear brothers and sisters are holding 26 different Qur'ans that do not agree. They actually disagree with one another. 26 different Qur'ans. When this happened live, in Speaker's Corner in London, in the United Kingdom, at that time there were only 26 different Qur'ans. But the numbers go up every time. And now we have found 32 different Qur'ans. Arabic Qur'ans, we are not talking about translations, but original Arabic Qur'ans. 32, mark my words, 32 different Arabic Qur'ans. Yes, you heard it correctly. So, you know, Muslims love to lie and use deception and say, hey, not even a dot has been changed, which is, of course, a big lie. And the numbers go up every time we find a new Quran, Arabic Quran that does not agree with the rest of the different Qur'ans. If we go to the Hadith, guys, let us start this teaching. If we go to the Hadith, everyone who is following uh, our live shows, you have maybe came across this Hadith, which is the story of Aisha mentioning in the Hadith that a goat came in and ate the Quran, this is a hadith from Sunan ibn Majah, which is a Hassan, means good hadith, not da'if. Muslim can say this is da'if and use all kind of gymnastics to tell you, hey, we don't accept this hadith. No, no, this is Hassan, this is good. Okay? Hadith number 1944. This is a very famous hadith that we often use to show Muslims that Allah allowed the goat or the sheep of Aisha to come in and eat the Quran. Read with me. The verse of stoning and of adult breastfeeding and adult ten times was revealed. So Allah revealed the verse of stoning and the verse of breastfeeding adults. So adults could suckle on a breast, men, adult men suckle on the breast of women so they can become their, basically their uh, sons. So they can come and enter and see the women. So they will not lust after the women. I know it's disgusting, but yeah, that's what Islam is, right? It's always disgusting. So that verse is gone. And the verse of stoning people who commit adultery was, is also gone. And how is it gone? It was eaten by the goat of Aisha, read with me. 
and the paper was with me so I just saying the paper of where these ayahs were written on were with, with, with me under my pillow did you catch it? so they were under the pillow of Aisha when the messenger of Allah died when Muhammad died we were preoccupied so they were busy with his death and a tame sheep came in and ate it so the tame sheep ate the Quran ayahs of Allah right so I wonder I always ask myself this question did the sheep when it ate the Quran of Allah did it became a holy sheep I wonder right I mean if if the sheep can eat holy Quran they always call it holy Quran there's nothing called holy Quran it's Quran al Karim but when the sheep ate the Quran did the sheep became holy and eternal like the Quran uncorrupted eternal word of Allah uncreated eternal word of Allah so I think the sheep became an eternal being like Allah and like the Quran so these verses were abrogated in recitation but not ruling other hadith established the number for fosterage to be five and as we said this is a Hassan hadith right so Muslims can say this is a fake hadith guys if you uh, encounter some delay or buffering problems please refresh the page I know it's because of my old PC so if you have the time and you can do it please donate by the super chat or go to my patreon account patreon.com slash rob christian for a new pc it's my pc that is causing this this is it's not my internet connection so if you have the problem please um, refresh your page and click on the 7 720p all right so to get a better quality use the settings of the youtube uh, page to get a better quality picture because i'm streaming through 72p 702p 20p uh, so yeah um, it's my PC guys my bad I can't do anything about it we have to deal with it till I get enough money to uh, get myself a new PC and you will see that I don't have the problems anymore so yeah the sheep of Aisha became a very holy sheep when it ate the Quran of Allah so how can a goat or a sheep in this case how how is it possible that a sheep can eat the Quran of Allah that doesn't make sense right is my sound clear guys is my sound clear refresh please let me know if it's okay now give me one if you can hear me guys please it's offline Well, what can we do? I think uh, next time I will do evolution to remove the jeans out of my PC. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Let's see if I can change the setting maybe use a different setting mm. guys can you still hear me? test, this is a test
give me a one or let me know if you can hear me test test Okay, I think we are back. I think we are back. Let me know if you can see. Refresh, guys. I think we are back. Yeah, it works. Okay, guys, uh, please invite your friends, if, who, the ones who left. Sorry, guys. It's my PC, I know. So, if you can help us out, uh, pray for us. Maybe if you can donate through the super chat through Patreon, and so I can buy a new PC ASAP as soon as possible. Use the settings, guys, and switch it to 720p. Okay, use your settings so you can watch the YouTube stream through a better quality video. So, use the setting on YouTube on your side. Okay, so guys, let me know if it's better now. Give me one if it's better. Give me one, please, just to make sure. So we can continue. Sorry, guys. If I could don't have something about it, then I would. Okay, thank you for the confirmation. God is good, guys. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that the stream did not go down completely. I closed a couple of screens. Maybe that was the reason. So as you see God, God is good. Guys, God is good. And we can continue. So as we showed you, the sheep of Aisha became a very holy sheep when it ate the Quran. And how can a sheep, guys, eat the Quran of Allah. How is this possible? And, and the eyes are gone. They are not in the Quran anymore, right? So how did Allah allow this to happen? His uncorrupted, eternal words eaten by sheep. And Muslims don't have them anymore. But wait a second. Do Muslims not always say the Quran is kept safe in our hearts, right? By memorizing it. So how did the goat do it? What kind of skills did this goat have? To enter the hearts of the Muslims and eat those ayahs from the hearts of the Muslims. How is this possible? You see the you see the, the devastating issue here. So are you telling me that the goat can do magic and enter the hearts of the believers who are the Muslims and eat the goats? Sorry, eat the ayahs from their heart. You Muslims always say, we memorized the Quran for the last 1400 years. Uh, Queen Midas, you can use the super chat. You can use the super chat and I think you need to use uh, a credit card or something to donate. There's a small dollar sign on the bottom of the live chat and when you press it, you can donate. Guys, if you can donate, please don't feel uh, forced to donate. I only ask you to donate if you can, whenever you can. Don't do it if it will, might cause you harm or problems, okay? So, I think this goat became very special when it ate the Quran as of Allah and it entered the hearts of the believers to also eat the ayahs from their hearts because they always said we memorize the Quran in our heart so that doesn't make sense and this hadith destroy the claim that the Quran of Allah is uncorrupted and eternal as they say no dot has been changed but here two complete ayahs are missing right the verse of stoning and the verse of breastfeeding an adult Lord of mercy. So if we go to a 
another hadith, or sorry, the Quran in this case. Guys, this is a little bit confusing. I hope that you guys still hear me, man. I love to do live shows. And this is what always kept me or hold me back from doing live stream because I know my PC is really bad. But we try, right? Till we get a good PC. So, if we go to the Quran, to Surat Al Qiyamah, chapter 75, we can read the following Move not your tongue with it, O Muhammad, to hasten with recitation of the Quran. And if we go to the following had, uh, ayah, it says in ayah 17. Indeed upon us is its collection in your heart. Whose heart? In the heart of Muhammad. Right? And to make it possible, it's recitation. So here, as you see, Allah did not give the command to people like Uthman or Zayd ibn Thabit or Abu Bakr to collect the Quran. But the collection happened in the heart of Muhammad. This is why Muhammad never gave the command to the Muslims to collect the Quran. So why did Abu Bakr, why did Uthman gave order to collect and again recollect the Quran and make a perfect copy? Because the perfect copy should have been in the heart of Muhammad. And Muhammad never even gave the order. He never gave the order to his followers to collect the Quran. So as you see, both Abu Bakr and both Uthman had no authority to collect the Quran and put it in a book form, right? Guys, refresh the page. I think my um, stream is better now. Just try to refresh and put the settings on 720p to get a better quality. Yeah, I think it's, you know, the whole PC must go. The whole PC is really bad. But what can we do, guys? We are trying. So, as you see, Muhammad not, not ever gave the order to collect the Quran and neither did Allah gave the order because the Quran is collected in the heart of Muhammad. If you go to Sahih al-Bukhari, guys, we can read the following. This is Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3806, hadith number 3806. It says, narrated Abdullah bin Amr, I heard the Prophet saying, he has heard Muhammad saying, learn the recitation of the Quran from four persons. Ibn Mas'ud, Salim the freed slave of Abu Hudayfa, Ubay and Mu'ad bin Jabbal. Guys, can you still hear me? Guys, can you still hear me? Hello, hello. Okay. G guys, sorry. Uh, what can we do? Yeah. Refresh, guys. Maybe it will work. Sounds good? Okay. Thank you, Cloudy Kaaba and others. Nice to have you with us, Cloudy Kaaba uh, and other people who always come and support us. Sorry for the technical issues, technical problems. So let us continue. As you see here, Muhammad is clearly saying in this hadith that you have to learn the recitation of the Quran from four persons. He mentioned Ibn Mas'ud, he started with him. And Salim, the freed slave of Abu Hudayfa, and Ubay and Mu'ad bin Jabbal, as you see. So why, why did Muhammad not mention Uthman ibn Affan, right? Why did Muhammad not, did not mention Abu Bakr? Why did uh, Muhammad did not mention Zayd ibn Thabit? The one who actually in the end collected the Quran and made nine perfect copies. Remember, according to the Islamic sources, Zayd ibn Thabit with his team 
made nine perfect copies and sent them to nine different regions, right? He sent them to nine different regions. And at that time, for example, Islam conquered Damascus. Islam conquered Basra, which is in Iraq. And, and the Quran was sent to many different locations, right? So where are those nine original copies of Uthman, the Uthmanic Quran? Where are they? All right? Where are those copies? Still bad, guys? It's still bad? Please let me know if... Uh, if it's better now, I, what can we do, guys? Is that it, it's it's the problem, man? My PC is really the problem. I really don't want to end this live show today, but let me know. Guys, can you see uh, the live stream? Is it working? Strange that it's working for some people and for other people it doesn't work. This is really strange. I don't know why. Guys, let me know if it's working because I saw someone giving me one. Uh Guys, I really feel ashamed. What can I do? I really can't do anything about it. Mm. Guys, give me a second. Let's see if I can do something about it. Just a second. Give me a second, guys. Guys, what about now? Can you do you do you can you give me one if you can s see the stream or do you hear the sound clear? Let me know if it's working. Let me know if it's working, guys. Please let me know in the live chat. Sound check. This is a test. This is a test. Guys, is it working? Okay. Let's let's continue guys. Let's continue. Um <clears throat> so Muhammad didn't give the command to Abu Bakr or Uthman to collect the Quran or 
get the recitations from them or from Zayd ibn Thabit, the one who was given the command by Uthman to go and make a new perfect copy. And Uthman said to Zayd, go get the copy of Hafza and rewrite it in the Qureshi dialect, right? Rewrite it in the Qureshi dialect. Now, how can you make a perfect copy from something or rewrite it from something that is already perfect? How is this possible, right? How can you do that? That doesn't make sense, right? So, what did actually happen? Let us see what happened, guys. If we go to Prophet Google, peace be upon him, it says that during the time of Caliph Abu Bakr, during his reign as a caliph, Abu Bakr, when 70 people who knew the Quran by heart, which were called Qari, were killed in the battle of Yamama. Not your mama, but Yamama, okay? Don't make that mistake. <laughs> so, Umar ibn al-Khattab became concerned and appealed to Abu Bakr. It's always Umar, right? He went to Abu Bakr, he said, you know, we need to do something about this. A lot of people who are memorizing the Quran or memorized the Quran died in that battle, right? Of your mama, I mean, uh, 